huge win for Democrats. The party was able to flip this seat blue after George Santos, who previously held the seat, was ousted from Congress back in December. Ever since then, this has been a hotly contested, closely watched election that ended swiftly last night. Democrat Tom Suozzi proudly declared victory after being named the next congressman for New York's 3rd Congressional District. We won! Suozzi rejoiced as he celebrated his victory with his constituents. He defeated Republican Nassau legislator Mozzie Pillip by over 13,000 votes, with 93% of precincts reporting so far. This race was centered on immigration and the economy, much like the issues all across our country. On a snowy election day, it was unclear how many people would show up to vote for the seat in the politically mixed district that includes parts of Long Island and a small section of Queens. Pillip said she called Swazi to congratulate him after the results came in. Each one of you worked so hard every single day in the last eight weeks, and we did a great job. We are fighters. Yes, we lost. But it doesn't mean we're going to end here. Swazi will be returning to Congress as he previously represented the 3rd Congressional District in the House for three terms before he gave up his seat to run for governor. A special election was called after Republican George Santos was expelled from Congress after a scathing House report found Santos broke numerous federal laws and engaged in other illegal activities. He has pleaded not guilty. But the people of Long Island and Queens are sick and tired of the political bickering. They've had it. They want us to come together and solve problems. So now we have to carry the message of this campaign to the United States Congress and across our entire country. This was a key race that was being watched nationwide ahead of the November general election. The results slim the already small Republican majority in the House and give Democrats a victory in the Long Island suburbs where the GOP has been gaining popularity. Former President Trump blasted Pillip on his social media platform saying, quote, just watch this very foolish woman, Mazi Pillip, running in a race where she didn't endorse me and try to straddle the fence when she would have easily won if she understood anything about modern day politics in America. So there's actually a redistricting process that is taking place right now that could reshape this area, this district. So uh, exactly how long Tom Swazi will hold on to the seat is unclear. But for now, guys, this is a good day to be a Democrat. That is the latest from Douglaston, Queens. Kieran Dillon, PIX11 News. Hey Patrick, 431 on Daybreak. And as we come on the air this morning, Democrat State Senator Tim Kennedy is now Congressman-elect Tim Kennedy, with nearly all of the votes counted, Kennedy won the 26th district special election by a landslide over Republican West Seneca Supervisor Gary Dixon. To on your side is your election headquarters for Decision 2024, and we have team coverage this morning on the candidates' reactions to that election. We begin with our Nate Benson, who spoke with Tim Kennedy last night. Nate. Hey there, good morning. It was quite the celebration at the Pierce Arrow Museum Tuesday night as Senator Kennedy becomes Congressman-elect Kennedy. The Associated Press called the race just 17 minutes after the polls closed at 9 p.m. Tuesday night. Remember, this special election happened because former Congressman Brian Higgins resigned on February 2nd, and that opened up the door for Kennedy to run, and now he's heading to Washington. During his victory speech, Kennedy thanked his opponent, West Seneca Town Supervisor Gary Dixon, and pledged that he would do whatever he could to help him and his community while in Congress. Kennedy recalled growing up during a time when people were leaving Western New York and how that drove him to begin volunteering and his political career. He went on to talk about fighting for issues like the Affordable Care Act, women's reproductive rights, combating gun violence, and even called for an assault weapons ban. After his speech, I asked the congressman about a divided Washington and how he plans to bring it together. Take a listen. Brian Higgins said he left Congress because of his growing impatience with the growing dysfunction in Washington. Are you concerned about seemingly growing dysfunction in Washington at this time. Yeah, I think everybody's concerned about the dysfunction of Washington, and that's why I'm going there. We're going there to fix it, to change it, to make a difference, and to make sure that our government uh, down in Washington is reflective of the, of the people of this great country. The people of this country deserve better than what the MAGA Republican extreme leadership in Congress is delivering for it today. I also asked the congressman if he would try to get himself on the Transportation Committee since he was the chairman in the state Senate. He said that would be a natural fit. Now, Kennedy said he would likely be sworn in within the next two weeks. That certainly gives him enough time to start staffing up for his office in Washington. On your side, Nate Benson, Channel 2 News. All right, thank you, Nate. And two on your sides, Andy Payton also heard from losing candidate Gary Dixon last night on his choice to concede early in the evening. 
Yeah, good morning, guys. It was a short night here in West Seneca for Gary Dixon, who took the podium and conceded this race within about an hour of the polls closing. And the West Seneca supervisor still striking a note of accomplishment in his speech, despite it taking just about 17 minutes from the time the polls closed for the Associated Press to call this race. Now, after addressing his supporters, I had the chance to speak with Dixon and ask him what it was that he thought ultimately led voters to choose Kennedy. Take a listen to this. Well, I think it's several factors. Uh, it was very short, so not a lot of time to to get uh, you know the name recognition and the message out. And then there's a you know a bit of a disparity in uh, resources, uh, so which goes to that also. But I mean, I think certainly the time period. Uh, you know, played a factor. Yeah, and as you just heard there, the West Seneca supervisor really pointing to that almost four month gap where he had to play catch up between the time Kennedy entered this race and when he received the GOP endorsement. Now, as far as where it goes from here for Dixon, GOP Chairman Michael Crocker shared with us this evening that Anthony Marecki is their candidate for this race in November, but did share with us that he feels that Dixon's best days are ahead of him here in Western New York, guys. So we'll have to stay tuned and see what exactly that can mean later down the road for him. But for now, on your side here in West Seneca, Andy Payton, Channel 2 News. All right, Andy, thank you. And Jenny has been following this race closely and joins us now with a breakdown of the early results. Good evening. Tammy, good evening. Early results are in tonight for the runoff special election. There's only two candidates, both Republicans. The AP called the race 17 minutes after polls closed. They say Vince Fong has won. That's a call both candidates agree with. Fong was unavailable for an interview tonight, but here's what Mike Boudreau had to say. I've already telephoned and gave Vince a phone call and we had a very great conversation with each other and and uh, gave him congratulations. And so in this case, I don't know that moving forward uh, would be really responsible to those you know who would be spending money on me. And so we're going to have to evaluate and see what that looks like. So you're not ruling anything out when it comes to your future and that anything includes potentially endorsing Fong. That's correct. OK. It's big news Boudreau was considering dropping out ahead of the November general election. That election is to decide who gets the full two-year term in Congress. The candidates in that race are also Fong and Boudreau. Now let's take a look at the numbers as they stand tonight. Statewide, about 82% of the votes are in. Assemblyman Vince Fong is leading with 60% of the vote statewide. Tulare County Sheriff Mike Boudreau is trailing with 40%. Results so far are similar to what we saw in the primary special election in March. March. Fong won Fresno and Kern. Mike Boudreau won Kings and Tulare. Again, that's what we're seeing tonight as well, and that is statewide. And here's a look at how voters are siding here in Kern County. Fong again in the lead with 74% of the vote. Boudreau trailing with 26%. Kern is Fong's home base. He's a native and he's represented Kern in the California Assembly for nearly a decade now. His name ID translates to votes and Kern makes up more than half the district. Many voters I spoke with tonight at the Kern GOP watch party said they chose Fong because they know and trust him. Again, the Associated Press and the New York Times are already projecting Fong as the winner in this race. He's put out a statement saying in part, quote, I am filled with humility and gratitude tonight as early results show that voters have overwhelmingly selected me to serve as their voice in Washington, D.C. We will be talking to Fong Wednesday morning. The race has been called in that special election in Ohio's 6th Congressional District race. The election is because former U.S. Representative Bill Johnson resigned his seat in January so he could take a job as president of Youngstown State University. So, current state senator Michael Rooley has been declared the winner by the Associated Press. He defeated Democrat Michael Kripchak. The two candidates will also face off in the November election for the new term that starts next year. Okay, you can find the latest results on our website and our News 5 app. Got one more call. I need that one more time in my ear. I'm sorry. We've got a call in the special election for the 4th Congressional District. That is Doug Coe, Loveland, and the Eastern Plains. This is to fill Ken Buck's seat for the remainder of the calendar year. No surprise here. It goes to Republican Greg Lopez over Democrat Tricia Calvaries. If we have the ability to see the numbers in that race, that's what's going to be most interesting. Watching the margin and whether this shows any kind of softening in terms of Republican leads of years past. That's a bit of softening. 
but not a lot. That's a 21-point margin right now for Greg Lopez over the Democrat Tricia Calvaries. Here's the reason why I say this to you. Ken Buck, in his last race in 2022, beat Democrat Ike McCorkle by 24 points and change. Buck and McCorkle also faced off in 2020, in which, in which Buck beat McCorkle by 24 points and change. Democrats have a dream that this will be a competitive district. A number like that suggests that it will continue to be a dream, because if there was ever going to be a chance for a candidate to underperform, it would start with somebody like Lopez who got drubbed in a GOP primary for governor a couple of years ago. His only elected office was Mayor Parker back when he was a Democrat in his 20s, something like 30 years ago, and has kind of been a fringe character in the party for a while. You don't see a tremendous Republican underperformance in that race. Democrats would hold out the hope that Boebert could so underperform in this race in the way that she did in her district on the Western Slope that it could be competitive. But I'm telling you, this would be the first sign that we would see which would be Lopez up by maybe 10 or 15 percent, not by 21 percent. So what's Greg Lopez going to bring to Congress? Um, well, he is uh, he's staunchly anti-abortion. Uh, he is staunchly pro-Trump. Uh, he's got an idea about doing away with one person, one vote in Colorado in order to uh, give more weighting to land geography, similar to the way that we do in the Electoral College nationally. Uh, but at the end of the day, with all respect to Mr. Lopez, this would be anybody going into the seat. He's a place filler. He's going there to be another Republican vote for Speaker Mike Johnson's agenda through the end of the year. Crucially, he's going to be a reliable vote for the Republicans in the House. He's not going to be a thorn in their side like some of the far right types or even the way that Lauren Boebert has sometimes been a thorn in the side of House speakers. He's going to go. He's going to toe the party line and he's going to vote as you would expect just about any traditional Republican to vote. Let's new tonight now a winner has been declared in the special election for the New Jersey's 10th congressional district. Democrat LaMonica McIver won, defeating Republican Carmen Bucco. The district includes Essex, Hudson and Union counties. Now the seat was left vacant by the passing of New Jersey Congressman Donald Payne Jr. in April. MacGyver will serve out the rest of Payne's term, which ends in January, and then she and Bucco will have a rematch on the November ballot for the full term. A congressional district, Democrat Dr. Kristen Lyerly conceded just before midnight. Republican Tony Weed will represent Wisconsin's 8th district in Congress, replacing Mike Gallagher, who resigned back in April. Weed beating Lyerly with over 57% of the vote. I think it's time to unite as a district, to unite as a country, heal and move together and let's start moving forward as a country. Do what's right for this country first and be a good, strong leader. The Trump endorsed candidate will finish the remainder of former Congressman Mike Gallagher's term before serving his own two year term starting officially on January 3rd of next year. In his acceptance speech, Weed told supporters it will be the honor of a lifetime to serve the people of Northeast Wisconsin, also saying he will take a pragmatic approach when he gets out to Washington, hoping to bring leaders together on all sides of the political spectrum. And following Tony Weed declaring victory, many Lyerly supporters left the watch party that was being held, some disappointed in the results. Lyerly says it was a long shot, but is proud of the campaign that she ran. We did everything we could, and this is what we've got. But it's not over, it's never over, and we're just gonna continue to fight for women, for families, for communities. That's what we got. When asked if she spoke to Weed, Lyerly says she left him a voicemail telling him congratulations. Action 2 News says all your election results from across the state of Wisconsin will work now to get you reactions to the latest results, including referendums. For a full list, head to WBAY.com. And still to come... Decide who will finish out the rest of Ben Sass's Senate term. Pete Ricketts, appointed to the Senate by Governor Pillen after Sass stepped down, has been declared the winner over Democrat Preston Love Jr. Ricketts getting 56% of the vote. Here's what Ricketts had to say tonight after winning that seat. Folks, we live in the best place in the world. We ought to be very grateful we live in Nebraska. Nebraska is what America is supposed to be. And we have a lot to offer the rest of the nation. 